and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some champion list burn. So this is for uh, this is going to be a rank up deck for some very fast games and for people that don't want to uh, spend a lot of resources like shards and stuff crafting a deck. If you're somebody who likes to play aggro and maybe even have a newer account, this could be an easier deck to put together. It's just seven rares and. 33 commons. The only rares are the one of Fading Memories, which as you can see is the least important card in the deck because all the other ones are three ofs. So this this could be replaced by a different card as well if you want to. But then just Decimate and Stalking Shadows. Those two are rare. Everything else is common in here. So, you know, if you want to, you know, put together a cheap deck to put together. But I think it's good. Even with that, even with that said, I think it's very good. Now, you're going to have some games that your opponent has, like, Eye of the Dragon and a bunch of Dragonlings, and you just lose. That's all right. Just go play the next one <laughs> kind of thing. But basically, the, the thought of the deck here is we have 12 one drops that you try to get ahead early, you know, try to have, like, like one drop into double one drop for, like, your first two rounds. Get ahead, get get some just damage in with, with all those one drops, and then with like Legion Grenadier, you know, House Spider, Legion Grenadier, Iron Ballista. With those units, try to get as much damage in as you can. And then you have a lot of reach. You have a lot of ways to do Nexus damage to finish the game. Imperial Demolitionist, Doom Beast are two units that do Nexus damage. And now Astral Fox is a new unit that can also deal Nexus damage. So with your Stalking Shadows in like the mid game, you're going to be looking for those three units. Because those three are going to give you that additional reach to deal the nexus damage that you want. Another option, if, if you don't see any of those, getting an onlooker, that's a pretty good late game card also with having being able to get multiple 4-1 fearsomes. Uh, but those are the three that you mostly want. And then you'll also use Noxion Fervor and Decimate for your two spells that will be able to do nexus damage also. The fading memories in here are basically going to be for those cards. Again, you know, get another Demolitionist or Doom Beast or, you know, Astral Fox and, and get some more of those and uh, do some more Nexus damage. That's mostly what those are going to be for. But again, you can use it early on like a Saboteur or an Onlooker or, you know, Grenadier, Ballista, anything like that that you think can get some extra damage in. Because that's what it's all about, getting damage in. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. This is like the exact opposite of the deck we just played. We just played like the slowest deck in the format. And now over to one of the fastest decks in the format. Okay, so we have Action Lee Sin. So again, Eye of the Dragon, worst card. Like that's Eye of the Dragon is simply one of the very worst cards for us to ever see. So if our opponent has Eye of the Dragon, we're probably gonna lose. But if they don't have Eye of the Dragon, I like our chances. How let's see, I guess maybe round one precious pet, round two house spider, round three ballista. So round four will I want the saboteur? Round four. I think so. I'm basically going Precious Pet round one because of Eye of the Dragon. Oh yes, no Eye of the Dragon. Let's go. It is on. All right, don't like it. Okay. I have so I, I kept the Noxion Fervor up, so if they were going to attack, I block, they use Twin Disciplines. Then I... That's fine. Then I Noxion Fervor. I don't think there's really any any order that we need to do that matters. You cannot win. No Nobify, please. Let this happen. 
Awesome. And they are down to three. It's a good sign. Yeah, that's that's the thing. They they have like draglings every round. Yep, that's that's the problem. Alright, gotta hope the same thing. They didn't have interaction last round. Hopefully they don't have it again this round. Awesome. There we go. We are 1 and 0. Oh. Again. Oh, Anivia! Okay, well this is a deck that people don't really play that much, but this is now the second time in as many streams as we've seen this. But this is... Anivia is the most anti-aggro deck there is. Assuming that they're playing all the regular Anivia stuff. Okay, so maybe not Saboteur. Because assuming they're going to have Withering Whale and all, you know, all the stuff. So maybe I don't have this. No, we don't need to play two Fading Memories. Fading Memories is the worst card in our deck. It's just the it's the 40th card. We prefer not to have it. But there's there's just nothing else that I really want. There's there's a lot of other options that are equally as eh, as Fading Memory is. Can see the Demacian border from here. Remember the objective. You can have Brothers Bond. You can have Unto Dusk. Last time when we played this, we played Brothers Bond. It really wasn't very good. You could have that, you could have Unto Dusk, you could have like Unspeakable Horror, um, Blade's Edge. Uh, you could play one Captain Farron. If you're expecting to play against like Anivias and stuff, maybe you want one Captain Farron. There are options. They're not great though. Winter, take you. People are playing Anivia instead of Feel the Rush because of the denies everywhere. I mean, I think Anivia probably just does a better job against the aggro decks that you want to be good against than what draws in the card. Routes closed. Oh, just that. Um, yeah, like I, I think this would be better than Feel the Rush, just kind of anyway. I don't, I don't think it necessarily is about deny. I think just Anivia. Um, is kind of better against aggro, and it's a very aggressive metagame. For the Empire. Make the Empire proud. This deck always looks really good whenever I play against it. This Anivia deck always looks very good. But you can see with just all the cards they play, they are this deck is designed to be aggro. That is certainly what it's designed to do. I'd feel better if we had one Captain Farron, because then even Stalking Shadows could hit your Captain Farron. Yeah, that's... That's gross. See, sometimes you'll play against the, the random Shadow Isles for all your opponent that just has all the anti-aggro stuff, and you're going to lose. And that's okay. It's a fast game. <laughs> you know, just go on to the next game. No big deal. All right, I think we can outrace this. I'm not exactly sure, but I kind of think we can. Kind of think we can. It kind of depends on like how good of a Green Glade duo hand they have, and like Green Glade duo and Zed. Those are the two cards that you know how good are how good of hands do they have with those two cards? You'll soon understand my methods. Ah! 
Doombeast not the best card to be drawn. It's going to be difficult to turn on the Nightfall. Like that's that's a lot later on card. First draw is being Doombeast. Doombeast is pretty bad. Okay, so their hand was perfect. Got it. Gotcha. <laughs> the, the two cards in the deck that I, that can defeat me. They got them both on curve. attack before they can play another before they play something else to block yeah make them block with these things that house spider is a good draw of just you know get an extra blocker for Zed you know, obviously enables the Nightfall for the Doom Beast as well. So they're at 11. If I fervor them. Put them down to fervor them, put them down to eight. Doom Beast is six. I think maybe I just pass, actually. Just kinda see what they do. Yeah, they save that. Okay. Alright, let's kill the Zed. Or do I put them down to eight? Killing see, I'm at eight right now. This is already gonna do like four elusive. All right, I'm gonna try killing Zed, but not sure if this is going to be. Yeah, I, I didn't want to fervor Zed pre-combat because of that because sharp sight, right? Like if I fervor the Zed before combat, they sharp sight it, and now they're attacking in with a lot larger things, and that's worse for me. Maybe that should have been three upstairs. Alright, Stalking Shadows. I see someone's been practicing their adorbis spells. Just like you showed me, Lulu. Whoa. And Putify. Okay, not the best draw. With that precious pet right there. Not the best draw. I'm gonna hold on to it into my hand because of Nightfall, like a Doom Beast. Yeah, yeah, this deck, this Lulu Zed deck's an elusive deck. That is the kind of deck that they're playing. Okay, so Precious Pet enables... If I don't attack, we could draw the Fervor. If I do attack, like, they have to just have pump spells here. Like, they would just block and save it. Yeah, so I think we just have to save it for Fervor. See, if I would have Fervored their Nexus, the Zed, if I would have Fervored the Nexus, the Zed probably kills me. Yeah, we'd... Yeah. Close game. Alright, cool. I'll play that matchup again. Not always expecting round 3, 4-2-Z. We never get to attack on round 1, do we? The attack token's a really big deal with both their champions being 3 mana. They really want to be attacking on round 3. It's a big deal not being able to... I think I'm just going to keep everything. Yeah. 
Hey, yeah, mentor into Green Glade Duo into Buff Zed, that's not a bad hand to start with. Not not a bad first three turns. Hang on, Buzzball. Okay, cool. Talking shadows for a little bit more. I am the blade in the darkness. This time we shall be killing this Ed first. Only one man available. These astral foxes have pierced some. The order. Could play that before never see us attacking, come. but probably not. I think we just attack for four. Otherwise, it's play Grenadier plus play Demolitionist. I think we just stack for four. I don't think they want to block. That that would put them to 11. This is a lot of damage. Not just these cards. This is my best play this round, but it does make my next couple of rounds a little awkward with having, you know, leaving my hand of four mana, four mana, three mana. pretty crazy so they just yeah the games the game is just do they have a rally I guess if they have a rally that's just 20 damage 20 elusive damage it's pretty crazy I guess if I so if I would have played grenadier demolitionist because they would have just blocked one of these so it, I would have had lethal Hopefully not. But yeah, I guess that's just 20, 20 elusive damage round 5. Wow. Alright, well I can't really erase that. <laughs> you know, whenever... I only have two attack rounds, right? I, have, I can attack round 2 and then attack round 4 and then they kill me round 5 with 20 elusive damage. I can't really erase that. But man, these hands... Again, round two, Green Glade, Green Glade duo, round three, Zed. And then they had, you know, Lulu on four also, so they had both their champions again, duo into Zed. Those, those are just awesome hands. What's up, Joyboy? Thanks for coming in from YouTube. Glad to have you here. This is the kind of matchup that we would want the Captain Farron in for sure. We need to have a much more aggressive opener. Let's keep the Grenadier and look for some ones. We have 12 one mana units in our deck. Why can't we find one? We at least have the attack token round one this time for the first time in a while. We would have won that last game if we had the attack token rounds one, three, five, because they wouldn't have been able to do that until round six and we would have killed them on five. So that last, that previous game, the attack token was the difference between winning and losing. And I don't know for sure about the game before whether or not it was, but there's a good chance that the same could be said for the first time playing against Lulu. Zed with them being able to attack round three with the attack token. That's the thing about playing an aggro deck like this. The attack token really matters, but then especially playing against a deck that's going to have round 3 Zed, the attack token really matters. But if our opponents have awesome hands, they're going to win, and that's what's, that's what's been these last few games. You kind of, you put a lot of pressure on them to have a very good hand. This is three games in a row where the very 
best possible round two and round three plays our opponent has had the best possible in their deck. Whether it's Green Glade Duo into Zed twice, or now House, House Fighter into Sentry plus Block combo. This is not a Death Lotus deck. Um, this is, we, you wouldn't play Death Lotus in this deck. You'd just rather have like Blade's Edge and take out a Green Glade duo with that if, if you want. It could be better than this Fading Memories. I'm not sure this is the worst card in our deck. I'm letting them spend some mana first before just playing the Onlooker. I'm not going to give them the information that an Onlooker could be coming. Could also just pass. Good hand. This was a good hand. Considering discarding the Doom Beast that's ephemeral, I think I could play some Dredger, discard the Doom Beast that's ephemeral, Astral Fox, kill the Dredger. So basically, I'm spending all three of these cards to draw one and do three damage to them. Because some Dredger is just going to get blocked by the Spiderling. Rise, metal brethren. Oh, then rise to the stars. At least that wasn't these things getting static shocked. But man, incredible hand. Good. That was the best card for us to draw. We got some options. Let's choose door number one. They are not patient with these static shocks. We're not going to be able to get the damage in. Ready. 
Do I need these things to block? Kept that Doom Beast. If I would have kept the Doom Beast over the Onlooker. No, because the Doom Beast was ephemeral. Wow. Wow. They're willing to do that instead of just open attack. That's crazy. Alright. Um, wow. Alright. Well, let's hit Doom Beast. Doom Beast! Not Doom Beast. We get House Spider. Maybe we can draw another decimate. Block four things. Follow my lead. Yeah, we're, like we're gonna be dead the next attack anyway. These things aren't gonna be able to get in. It, it hurts fervor. But let's draw a decimate. Decimate! Oh, it was fervor! Sorry, fervor wouldn't have, wouldn't have done it anyway. I guess keeping one of my things alive... You know, so the thing is, we would have gone down to two. But keeping it alive would have been better for the fox and the demolitionist. Because then I could have, like... Fox Demolitionist into Fervor. Okay, give us the attack token. <laughs> Come on. No, they get the attack token again. Alright, well we shall see if they have the same thing again. If they have, you know, round two Green Glade Duo, round three Zed with the attack token. Some good damage in. And no duo, hopefully, no Zed either. No, always Zed. Always Zed. Always round three Z. Attack him. You're covered. <laughs> They'll never see me coming. Remember the objective. Alright, I'm putting everything out here to attack with instead of just open attacking. Makes my attack a lot worse, but we also get we get this this extra damage in. So good. they're down to three. So we'll see if they can kill me. They need it. twin disciplines plus ghost. Don't matter. All I need to do is Astral Fox the Demolitionist. Or this thing. Only the 
difficulties to abide. And that's why I blocked with both of them. There we go. Okay, we were about to die on round five. It looked like they had a rally. That's what it looked like. And so it looked like we were going to die round five again with the ghost and the Zed. But this time we were able to kill them. It's such a big difference having the attack token in rounds one, three, five, or two and four. It's it's so hard to kill them, you know, with only attacking round two and round four, <laughs> you know, first. That's kind of that's kind of the game. But this time we you know, we were still able to to get it done. I think two things. If they do not have the attack token in round three, and also if they don't have round three Zed, if either of those things, you know, just one of those two things, I think it's very likely that we win. Obviously, it's never 100%. I think it's very likely when we win if it's one of those two things isn't the case. If both of them are the case, that's how, that's how they have a good chance of winning them. In all three games, both of them were the case. Okay. Still been short games. I'm playing one more to get some different practice in. So Twisted Fate, who is doing Twisted Fate Shadow Isles? How do we run into Twisted Fate Shadow Isles? This is just like Anivia. This is like as bad for us as Anivia or worse. Because Twisted Fate Shadow Isles has to be Go Hard and Withering Whale and all sorts of nonsense like that. Who's doing this? I don't change things. That's a bunch of nonsense. Oh, I hear them. So you want to play Twisted Fate Shadow Isles if your opponent's going to be playing Championless Burn. Because that's going to be a good matchup for you. I just can't play Precious Pet because of Make It Rain. Do I Demolitionist? I guess I could see doing that. War Mason, reporting for duty. For What's up, Nanuel? This is watching this on my new 65-inch screen. That is a huge monitor. That sounds pretty awesome. That sounds awesome. Alright, Stalking Shadows, some House Fighters. Ready, aim. Your path ends here. Missed. Let's heal this Nexus back. How are we playing against the random Gohar? We've gotten some <laughs> some poor pairings. Never lost a fair game. Soak it in. Alright, so that's it's good that they got Twist of Fate down and because Twist of Fate red card, you know, demolishes us, right? So it's good they got that out of the way. Now hoping. Just hoping no withering well, basically. Really hoping no withering will. Okay, that's not. That looks like no withering will. The spiderling gets blocked by one of these things. That's fine. That means those things aren't blocking my two twos. We, we're gonna have extra spiderlings. We don't. We don't need that thing. Yeah, that, that's fine. Easy. Okay. Cleared the board and got four damage in. Down to twelve. Watch this. Hmm. Astral Fox. Let me try that out. Don't ask where it's from. Ask how much. 
So I'm willing to pass and have them waste four mana. Deal me in. Yep, they're waiting to do that. For all of you. No surprise there. Just think what would be really devastating. Probably another you know, just favorite red card. Attack. They block with Twisted Fate and Black Market Merchant. Take one, go to 12. Who's gonna get in my way? Fire beware! Okay. Win. Like a fish in water. <laughs> That's a good draw. Really hoping they do not have a go hard. Looks like that's what that is. Okay, so if that's go hard, hopefully it's not. Yes. No. No. Go back and play it. Okay. So that puts us to 12. And then this is 4, 6, 8, 10. So this would be... This would put us down to 2. All they have to do is just play... They have 5 mana. All they have to do is just play another attacker. Speaking of trouble, decimate, decimate. Decimate, decimate. All right, GG's. Man, we feed the, the Go Hard deck. They didn't play a Withering Whale. They did have multiple Twisted Fate red cards. The first, well, the first was a fate they used blue card, and that was kind of a mistake. They should have waited for red card. They should have been a little bit more patient. Uh, didn't get to draw the death's hand, but yeah, that's that's what our deck's all about, right? Like it's it's no champions, and you know you just try to burn them out like that, right? Like you, you're gonna lose some. For our only every loss only counts as one, even even if it is like a dominating loss like that Anivia one. But uh, we got kind of, I think we got pretty unfortunate with the Lulu Z opponents. You know, we went one and two in those matchups. We went two and two otherwise. But I think that I think that that's going to be a favorable matchup overall. Just never having the attack token and always Z on three. We ended up losing two out of three. That's all right. That that will happen. You could play some champions if you want. I don't know if the champions necessarily make it that much better. The Death's Hand, of course, is my least favorite card. I could see playing like a, a Vladimir. In here, instead of that Death Sand, reason being for Vladimir is that it does have like that attack ability to drain from the enemy Nexus. It's also a big five-five, kind of hard to block, and I think it would kind of confuse the opponents, right? Like if you saw, if you saw Noxus Shadow Isles the Vladimir, maybe you don't think that it's going to be this this aggressive, right? Like if you just play like an Elise or a Draven or a Callista or even a Katarina or a LeBlanc or a Darius, right? You play any of those cards, your opponent's going to be like, okay, that that's you know that's definitely aggro deck, you know they're real aggro, and so like they're going to be mulliganing accordingly. Who knows? Maybe maybe like a Vladimir, they don't necessarily think that immediately. So I could I could see playing a Vladimir. Plus Vladimir, pretty cool. Could play a Swain. You know, Swain, Nexus Strike, Fearsome. It can do some stuff, too. So, you know, what? if you want to play a champion, maybe, you know, maybe one of those. Uh, those are some options. But anyway, 
That's going to be it here for this champion list burn deck. Fast games, fun games, always pretty close. Uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. And as always, feel free to leave those comments and let me know what you think of the deck. I guess technically we were 2-0 and after we put in Death Sand, weren't we? Yeah, I think we were We were 1-4 and without Death Sand and then 2-0 two, two and with Death Sand, even though we didn't draw the Death Sand. Maybe that's the good luck card. So, <laughs> Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.